everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're checking out the SteelSeries Stratus XL today. This is an iOS-only game controller, though, so it only works with the iPad, iPhone, and iPod Touch running iOS 7 or later. This is running Apple's proprietary game controller standard, so although it connects via Bluetooth, uh, connecting it up with other devices doesn't get you anything. I've tried it already, it just doesn't work. Uh, but there is a Windows version of this game controller coming soon, although it would be nice, of course, to have one that does everything, uh, but we're not going to be so lucky. But let's check out uh, the overall hardware because this is a pretty nice controller. This is kind of the big brother uh, to the original Steel Series Stratus, which is this little guy here. And uh, this is a much bigger controller, obviously, so if this one was too small, uh, this one might just be just right. It's a, about the size of an Xbox controller, very comfortable to hold in the hand, has a very similar feel to it. They did put the thumbsticks, of course, in a different spot as compared to the Xbox controller, so you have two thumbsticks down here. Uh, these are not pushable thumbsticks, though, so you can't push them in, uh, but you can, of course, move them around. You have a directional pad here, a play-pause button. There's a little battery connection indicator uh, right up there, and then you've got your four buttons. All of these buttons, though, are pressure-sensitive, so if there are games that support uh, you know, kind of different degrees of pressure when you push down, uh, this will work with it. Uh, on the back here, you've got two triggers, also pressure sensitive, as you can see. So these are analog, I believe, uh, controls there. And then you have two triggers over here, which I think are also pressure sensitive too, although there's not a lot of travel to these, and actually not a lot of travel to the buttons either, as you can see. So they go down about where you'd see a normal Xbox controller kind of go down. Uh, there is a, a battery indicator here, as, long, as well as the Bluetooth pairing button. And then what I really like is that it runs on AA batteries, because all too often my controllers have like internal batteries and they're always dead because I don't use them all that often and then when I'm ready to play a game for 20 minutes the thing's dead and I gotta go find the cable and everything else. This one, get the batteries, pop them in and you're good to go. I use rechargeables for a lot of stuff in the house so I always have uh, charged double A's waiting around for me so I kind of like that. Uh, it doesn't have its own internal battery. Uh, they claim I think like 40 hours or so on a pair of these batteries. I, I have no reason to doubt that. Uh, it is very low powered uh, overall and it does seem to uh, not have any battery issues that I've been able to see in my testing so far. And what I really like is that you can switch it off. Go figure, an on-off switch on something in 2015. So that's kind of nice too. You can flick the hardware switch to the off position and it is off. It's not looking for anything. It just goes off and your batteries stay preserved. So that's the overall hardware. What we're going to do now is pair it up uh, with my iPhone here and see how it works. Now, one of the games I like to test when I'm testing a game controller on iOS is one of the uh, Sonic the Hedgehog uh, remasters, and this is Sonic the Hedgehog 2. And as you can see here, there isn't much of a delay between the time that I'm pushing the button and things happen on screen. So the latency is very low, which is very important for games like this that were built for uh, game, con game consoles with wired controllers. So it is actually a pretty good gaming experience here. Uh, and again, this is because this controller is built for uh, iOS uh, 7's game controller protocol, and this game, of course, supports it. So pretty nice gaming experience overall. Now in the box it said it works with the Mac, so I figured I would pair it up with my Mac via Bluetooth and see if it did. So we've got uh, a game emulator running right now on my Mac here. This is, a, this is called OpenEMU and it runs old uh, video game console games on your Mac. And what I like about using this is that it supports just about every joystick you can possibly connect to it via USB or Bluetooth. So if it's going to work, uh, it's going to work with this or not. Uh, so what we're going to do is pop into our uh, setup mode here. It does show up on the list of input sources, so that is a good thing. So we'll select that, and then I'll go ahead and try to map my controls. And if I hit the gamepad here, as you can see, it's not registering anything, but if I use my stick here, it does uh, register that as a, as a button there. So that is a good sign. So we'll go ahead and just uh, map some more of these buttons here. And uh, what we'll do is pop out of the configuration screen and unpause the game. And as you can see, I can't move at all with my thumbstick, but I can move with the uh, directional pad, but I can move with the thumbstick. So uh, that does work, although um, it's not the most ideal way to play Sonic the Hedgehog. One thing I noticed is that, and it doesn't always happen, uh, but when I'm using the controller on the Mac, there is sometimes a little button latency, very small, but enough for me to notice it. And I think it might be due to the pressure that I'm pushing these buttons down with. So I think it's, again, this is really uh, more suited for uh, iOS devices right now than it is going to be on the Mac. And of course, it doesn't work on any other platform. So I think there's probably some uh, software API that uh, this is going to work with across both the Mac and the iOS platforms that developers have to write for. Uh, and not everything's going to support it just yet. So um, unfortunately, we can't get a controller that just works with everything. You might see some uh, cheaper ones out there that support, they say this, they support iOS as well as Android and Windows, but uh, those are usually supporting the older iCade format, which worked with a lot of games before Apple announced their own standards. So while it'll work with some older stuff, 
uh, none of the new stuff will work with it. Uh, this will, except it won't work on any other platform. So unfortunately, we're going to have to just pile up uh, game controllers now for every platform that we're on, unfortunately. But that's not SteelSeries fault. They built a nice controller here. I can definitely recommend this one to iOS fans. My only gripe is that it doesn't have a little holder for your phone because it'd be great to have something that could just hold the phone in place uh, like many other controllers out there on the Android platform have, so I don't have to uh, find a stand or something for my iPhone. But good controller overall, very solidly built, and I can recommend it for iOS users. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.